This is an old tub video that I never got to watch, so I'm going to watch it now. This video is called Cartoon Episodes That Traumatize Children. Um, I never actually watched this video, so I want to go watch this one, one now. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this drink. Pull up to Jackson then. Jackson what, nigga? Florida? Jackson, Florida? Let's go ahead and get into it. W. Um, we're gonna skip because this 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 old tub video. But I, I want to see. I want to see. Pull up to Baltimore. Shout out to Baltimore, man. A snack. Grab a drink and let's get started with the video. Yo, young tub look crazy. Pingu's dream. Pingu. Pingu was a Swiss British stop motion claymation children's show created by Otmar Gutman in 1987. The main I would see the meme and everything, but I never knew what show this is from. I'm not gonna lie. The character is a penguin called Pingu who lives in the South Pole along with his family and friends. The show aired on BBC Children's and Education, and episodes averaged five minutes in length. Today, we will be talking about season one, episode 26. Pingu's dream. The episode starts off as normal, nothing out of the ordinary. Pingu's mom is reading him a bedtime story and Pingu begins to drift away to sleep. He wakes up to the sound of his igloo jumping and before you know it, the igloo flies away. Then his bed extends its legs and it begins walking. The I'm not gonna lie, the show look already look creepy. I'm not gonna cap to you. The camera cuts to this creepy walrus watching Pingu in his bed go about what the, the day. Fuck? Not to mention that every time the walrus pops up, these synths are played. Just It just gives you some uneasy feeling. What's up with things involving walruses being creepy? Like, what the, the directors keep showing the audience how the walrus is just watching Pingu. Eventually, the walrus what makes his introduction. Hell? And you know how the directors made this Why is it animated like that? Is it claymation? Is it animated? The character make hell. his introduction to children. This is how. <laughs> okay, yeah, I would have been terrified. This this nigga's ugly as fuck. I'm out. This nigga look like a fucking nutsack. <laughs> It's clear to see that the walrus is supposed to have this like goofy personality that finds everything funny and just wants I to watched play. it so I Pingu never watched it, I only saw the meme. Making him almost human like. The walrus begins messing with Pingu and eats his bed, all while non-stop laughing. Pingu and his bed begin running away and Pingu ends up falling down a hill of snow. It was actually a pretty cool transition because the next camera zooms out and you can see that he's in his room again. The episode ends with Pingu crying and his mother consulting him. Oh, yes. he had a nightmare type shit. That's how this episode ends. Not only is this the ending to the episode, but this, this shit was never terrifying to me. Finale. This episode Nigga, that's a weird ass finale, and the, it don't look like these niggas is talking. So you just got this random ass EDP four four five walrus just just chasing this nigga around and eating his bed. The episode was highly controversial and was eventually banned from television due to the giant walrus being too scary and unsettling for many young viewers. The mm. creator, Omar Gutman, actually used the same walrus model in a German short film he made years prior. This caught me off guard because the voice he used for the walrus is so unexpected. Here, I'll just play the clip. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that shit does sound. I don't know why I expected it to sound like, but not like that. <laughs> he talking yeah. though. Um, let's move on. Let's move on the list. Blue Cat Blues, Tom and Jerry. Tom, Tom and Jerry had a lot of episodes where I was like, yo, what the fuck is going on? I'm not going to lie. Jerry need no introduction. I'm 100% sure everyone Shooter, good night. this video knows exactly who these two are. Blue Cat Blues is about Tom's love for a female cat, which doesn't love him back. Mm -hmm. This reflects a lot about life, you know what I'm saying? My nigga Tom was depressed. He was down bad. He was sad. He was listening to fucking XX and Toss, y'all. This nigga had a Bart uh, Simpson profile picture, my nigga. He hit the nobody hit me up. Only real ones know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's tough. A quote by Jerry's narrator. I don't think I've ever seen the episode, though, but... Tom sit on the train tracks, patiently waiting for the train to come by. The quote is, Poor Tom. In a few minutes, it'll all be over. And for the first time since he met her, he'll be happy. Poor, miserable, lovesick creature. I suppose people will say I should have helped him. I know. What but the fuck? Better this way. Talk about a kid's show getting dark. Throughout the episode, we see just how much Tom is in love with this cat and how he is overthrown by another cat by the name of Mr. Butch. The Damn. cat with more money, more gifts, a better car. Tom resorts to drinking milk, which in this episode is a substitute for alcohol. alcohol. Tom is oh my god. Gutter until Jerry saves him. They get splashed by. Yeah, I don't care what nobody said. Jerry was a W man, bro. Jerry's like one of the biggest W mans of, of all cartoon history, bro. Jerry, Jerry was a W man, my nigga. Who you know, Tom always trying to fuck with this nigga, bro. Who you know gonna really have your back, nigga, even though you be doing all that bullshit, my nigga. Jerry just really be trying to live his best life, my nigga. 
Potter and come to find out it's Mr. Butch and the love of Tom's life riding away in his car with a just married sign. After this, the same thing happens to Jerry as his girlfriend is riding away with another mouse. Jerry brings himself down to the train Damn. tracks, sits next to Tom, and both patiently wait for the train to pass by. The episode ends with the haunting horn of a train. Oh my god. Yo, that's dark as fuck, nigga. This is a kid show. Damn. I'm not gonna hold you. I don't know if I would have understood it as a kid, but like looking back, yo, this is actually crazy for them to really put out like that. Like, is this allowed? I remember it now. Damn, is it shows you, chat? Sometimes relationships or lack thereof, nigga. Just, 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 just really get to you, my nigga. But damn, they really like showcase this. Don't you message bitches ain't shit. This episode was banned by Cartoon Network and Boomerang due to its references to alcohol and. Also, I just want to clear up a common misconception, and that is that this is actually the finale to the series. It's not. Mm. That would have been crazy Man's if it was. Man's best friend, Ren and Stimpy. This is exactly why I didn't watch Ren and Stimpy, because every video, every episode looked creepy. I didn't watch Ren and Stimpy for this exact reason, my nigga. Ren and Stimpy ran on Nickelodeon from 1991 to 1996 and focused on a social... This nigga right here, I hated how this nigga looked, bro. I, like, I don't give a fuck. I know this show's iconic and whatever the case may be, bro. I hated how this nigga, like, I don't, was he a naked mole rat? Was he a dog? Was he a fucking, uh, a, a, a wombat nigga with two legs? I don't know, my nigga, but I wasn't fucking with the show. I ain't gonna cap. Sociopathic Chihuahua and a Clueless Cat. This show got oh. with so much shit, it's actually scary. Season 2, Episode 4 opens up with a man by the name of George Lee. Like, look at this nigga, bro! Look at how he's designed! Dog. This nigga look like he... Fucking steal grease from the local fucking burger spot. Adopting Ren and Stimpy at a pet store. Once he takes them home, he puts them through a bunch of rigorous tasks to see if they can keep up with how he wants his ideal pets to act. In one scene, he forces Stimpy to get on his couch so that he can learn how to be quote unquote disciplined and, well, just watch. Yo, what the? Yo, whoever animated this show, whoever was the director behind the show had to be sick. That's a good boy. I have no idea how Nickelodeon let this show air in the first place. Eventually, George says that his pets need to learn how to attack. So he puts on this padded bite suit and Stimpy is reluctant due to him being his owner. Ren, on the other hand, takes full advantage of this and begins beating the ever-living shit out of George with a paddle. So much so that George's head does a full 360 and right eyeball. Yo, how is this a yo? <laughs> yo, the animator dead ass wrong. This show was for the wrong audience. I'm not gonna lie. This show was just for the wrong audience. This nigga had Mortal Kombat kill cam on. Yeah, this show is for the wrong audience. Falls out of its socket. Ren continues on his rampage and just doesn't stop beating this man to a pulp. It even shows George with X's for eyes, and we all know what that means. Though he actually didn't die. It's still quite disturbing to add that little detail. But the disturbing parts of this episode don't end there. George climbs out of his suit, breathes like a maniac, and congratulates Ren on being a true champion. The episode ends with all three characters dancing. Like, this not, this not weird to nobody. I would have grabbed the Bible or something. This not weird to nobody. This is exactly why I didn't watch this show, bro. I will never re not regret watching this show, bro. Everything about it, how it's animated, how these niggas just had this demonic smile on bro like nah i'm cool bro y'all 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 got it y'all got it with the show i will never regret not watching this show yeah now this episode actually never ended up airing on nickelodeon it was banned once they uh saw what it actually contained but this episode was moved to ren and stimpy adult party cartoon and that show was basically a revival of the original except with very sexual it was just a very sexual show i mean if the creator went from making a kid's show and turning that kid's show into a sexual i mean i guess we could see where his mind was how the fuck yeah the nigga is sick the, the creator is obviously a sick individual how do you go from making a kid's show to a show about sexual in uh in your windows, my nigga. Just like that. Uh, and by the way, the main character are animals, by the way. I just want to put that out. The main character are animals, so... I don't know what happened though, bro. Animator is, uh, got mad money, though. I bet he do. Anyway, we could tell that this creator was trying to go with this dark humor, but it just ended up being super creepy for kids, and it was not the right move.
Teeth for Two, Cat Dog. Cat Dog ran for seven years on Nickelodeon from 1998 to 2005. You may recognize Dog's voice since it's Tom Kenny, SpongeBob's voice actor. Mm. Teeth for Two is actually a fun concept for an episode where whenever one of them does something, the other one feels it, except it revolves around teeth. Look, I hate the dentist already. Yes, I do go, but just the fact that there's drills in your mouth, Pause? Nah, bro. No pause. I just hate everything about the dentist so much. Anyway, the dentist tells them that the food they eat affects the other's teeth, resulting in Cat's teeth to become brown and oh. Cat tries to convince Dog to start eating. He got them, them British shit. Healthy, but then turns into a battle seeing who can do more damage to the other's teeth. Cat chews on ice and Dog chews on foil. Later that night- Have you ever like tried to like, like have you ever bitten ice before? Yo, especially yo teeth sensitive, my nigga. Oh my god. Dog is asleep and Cat attempts to brush his teeth. He is unable to do so because of all the food in his mouth. So what's the next best option? That's right. Traveling inside of their own body to come out as an inside out cat out of Dog's mouth. What? Oh no, this looks crazy I'm not gonna lie. Yo, yo, this looks crazy. No way! This okay. This looks like some fucking fine ass at Freddy's three shit, bro. Are they serious? Dog screams of horror and swap. This is easily the worst one. I'm not gonna lie. This is even somehow worse than the last one. How did they think this was cool? Follows cat back down to where he's supposed to be. Skipping to the end, they get their teeth fixed, but end up getting food allergies from all the junk they ate throughout the entire episode. Never thought I'd see an inside out cat trying to brush a dog's teeth. Knuckles and his hilarious problem. The yeah. misadventures of Flapjack. Okay. Now, mind you, Flapjack Flapjack is hard. I love Flapjack. But the show was creepy. There's a lot of like hold on, this this is my favorite sound effect. Hold on. But that shit looks like it came Flap Jack gets approved. Sound effect. I need to play. What's that? Oh when that nigga was yelling, I fuck with that. Hold on. You know if I don't get my beauty sleep, I get those nasty barnacles under my eyes. Oh, oh. Like bro. <laughs> like the show the show had a lot of creepy shit, but by the by the time this show came out, I was like 12, 11, 10. I, I was like around there, so I could handle some some shit like that, you know what I'm saying? But the show, every time I mentioned Flapjack and how much I love Flapjack, people were like, oh that show was creepy as hell. Which it was, to an extent. I was watching Flapjack and Chowder back to back. This Adventures of Flapjack was another show that got away with so much. I was on Courage at 6. I remember watching kid, Courage too. I loved it just because it was so gross and I thought that was so funny back in the Courage day. Courage at 6 is crazy though. It was funny still frames of like really detailed zoomed in pictures of the character. This nigga name was Dr. Barber, bro. Character's faces. Anyway, season two, episode four is Knuckles and his hilarious problem. This episode is about addiction. More specifically, Knuckles' addiction to candy, which has the effects of alcohol. From feeling warm and happy, angry at the world, to depression. The next morning- I'm not gonna lie. Now that I really remember this episode too, so I can really speak on how I like took it. I didn't take it like that. Like I was a kid, so I didn't think about alcohol or anything like that. But now thinking about that, that is kind of crazy, but. I guess what all these kids won't take it a certain type of way, like when they got the innuendos, kids won't like really notice it like that, but. And after Knuckles ingests a bunch of candy, Flapjack realizes that Knuckles has become addicted to the candy, so much so that he hallucinates, sees Flapjack Yo. as a lollipop, and tries eating him. Next, Knuckles- Yo, this is crazy! Flapjack tells him that he's just fine and he can trust him. Though, this only leads to two candy rampages where he steals from homes, babies, and a gumball machine. Then we go to this Bro's scene showing just how this candy addiction has left Knuckles with a candy trough, being used as a doormat, and taking any bit of candy he can get, even if it's from a stranger's mouth. Uh, no, nah, looking back, this is a crazy episode, though. I'm not going to lose you. I remember watching this episode vividly, too. Bubby decides to send Knuckles off to isolation on a piece of the boardwalk into the sea. Here, Knuckles begins hallucinating and imagines a giant Yo. flapjack putting his arms inside of his mouth and vomiting candy. Yo! Oh, I'm more creeped out at this now than when I was a, a child, bro. When I was a child, I was like, yo, this is funny as fuck. Yo, I'm more creeped out now than I was, than I used to be. Jesus Christ. Very dark episode if you think about it, especially seeing just how bad the effects of candy have left Knuckles. I really like the episode though. It really makes you aware of just how bad alcohol or any addiction can be. Damn.
Earth Mover, Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond released in 1999 and aired on Cartoon Network and WB Kids. Today we're going to be talking about Season 1, Episode 15, aka Earth Mover. We start with this teenage girl by the name of Jackie hanging with her friends, one mm -hmm. of which is Terry McGinnis, aka the Batman after the original Bruce Wayne Batman. She explains that she's been feeling like she was followed Batman and watched by someone. Soon after she had that, a stalker. Terry sees a mysterious figure outside through the window. A chase begins, but the figure isn't caught. The next day, Jackie's adopted father gives all three of them a ride, but first he says he wants to show them something. That being a piece of land he plans on buying and placing a factory on. An earthquake happens and again, there is another fight scene. After this, Bill, her adopted father, explains that he thinks it might be Jackie's real father looking for him. He tells the story from many years ago and while he was trying to dump toxic waste into an abandoned mine shaft, the wire pulling up the container got stuck on a piece of wood and resulted in the entire mine shaft collapsing in on itself. Jackie's father was at the bottom and ended up being crushed by the debris. Not only that, but was covered by the toxic waste. Everyone assumed that he died instantly, and Bill felt so bad that he ended up adopting Jackie, who was only a kid at the time. Fast oh. forward into the episode, and the Earth Mover has trapped both Damn. Jackie. Yo, Batman. One thing about Batman cartoons, Batman always had like crazy shit in it, like like crazy stories in it. You know what I'm saying? Like the topics were always a little bit more darker in Batman or shows like Avatar and stuff like that. And Bill underground. During this scene, Jackie finds out what her father actually looks like, and well. Oh my god, yo, he showed that? So like the text was saying, I can't show too much due to a copyright claim, but basically Jackie is horrified seeing that this is her father. I mean, who wouldn't be? Look at the way they drew it. Yeah, that's basically the scene in a nutshell. I mean, even listen to that voice. It sounds like he's struggling to Bro's get- Bro's body decomposing, this nigga turned into a fucking gargoyle. Oh yeah, it's, it's, his it's, words it's, out. He seems to think that Bill betrayed him and left him to die so that he didn't have to split the revenue with a partner. He also sees Bill adopting Jackie as her getting stolen from him. Imagine accidentally dying and then the friend that accidentally killed you adopts your daughter? Yo, that's actually Bro, creepy as fuck. Batman swoops in and saves the day. The episode ends with this very dark quote. My father. He's not your father. Not really. He's a ghost. Damn. Dad. Jesus Christ, that's creepy. An episode ended like Luke's that? Master P, Mr. Meaty. Ooh. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. This show was creepy. I watched this entire show. This show was actually dead ass creepy. Every episode of this show was creepy. The animation, I mean, the art style was creepy, nigga. Like, everything about the show was creepy. I'm not gonna hold you. Mr. Meaty aired from 2006 to 2009 and this was, was canceled to a mix of low ratings and criticism I forgot this show was and a, a, who protested a against the show. Honestly, the show was very lucky it even lasted three years considering how ugly Only all the characters Mr. were. Meaty? The show followed fast. Yo, like, like, look at this, this shit, bro. Yo, a lot of this... A lot of, like, the art styles and shit, I feel like kids were are so, like, they're, like, so small brain that they just let shit like this fly. Like, because nobody's going to complain about this unless you're scared of it. But, like, if you're not really scared of this, then you're going to be like, oh, okay, you're not really going to care about the art style or how it looks or the, the puppets. It's actually puppets, but, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to care about how the show really looks too much like that, you know what I'm saying? But looking back, this shit was a monstrosity, my nigga. Like, this shit is dead ass ugly as fuck, my nigga. Like, we went through these shit, and kids nowadays don't even know. Like, I'm saying, like, this show was, I don't even know how this was allowed to release. Food workers, Josh and Parker, through their odd adventures. Season 1, episode 6, begins with Parker, quote-unquote, mooching off of everyone and eating their food. Josh gets annoyed and tricks them into eating oh it. Oh, Then, weird things start happening. Like, all of the food Parker is about to take a bite out of disappear. Josh records it with a camcorder and Yo, slows down the footage. <laughs> then we see that a giant tapeworm is living inside of Parker, eating all of his food. They decide to get rid of the tapeworm the only way they know how, fishing it out of Parker's stomach. They do end up getting it out, and and an Australian man comes oh, by and says he'll buy it from the zoo. Though he doesn't I remember this episode. Instead, he uh he swallows it whole in front of them. Here we go. Come on in. Ah. Oh. That's this stuff. Nice episode happy feel yeah, this says she tickles on the way down. Ew, this show was already creepy. I'm not gonna lie, chat. Like, as a kid, it's not it's not hard to get scared by something. Do y'all know to this day? I'm still afraid, like, a Spongebob episode that has scarred me is when Spongebob has that splinter in his thumb and it keeps growing. Like, to this day, like, that's why when I was working in the wood shop uh, last week and I got a splinter, my nigga, even to this day, that splinter still fucking, like, low-key bothered me, my nigga, because, like, uh, just of that episode, my nigga. 
And nigga said, need that, bro. You're sick, my nigga. Um, just of that, just cause of that episode, bro. I'm telling you, I'm I had that shit was weird. The episode where Patrick was a gorilla, like there was a couple episodes in SpongeBob. The toenail one, Squidward toenail. Oh my god, yo. There's a couple ones that go stick with me for a little bit, bro. Wow. Okay. King Ramsey's curse slash mm, courage. You know, cur- courage. You knew courage had to be on here. Past courage, the cowardly dog. This list would not be complete without mentioning courage, the cowardly dog. I could go on and on about all the creepy monsters that gave kids nightmares throughout in the entirety of the series, but I want to mention the one that stuck with me the most, and that's King Ramsey's curse. In this episode, Eustace does not want to return a historical slab because he hears on the news that it's worth one million dollars. A person from the museum it belongs to comes over to take it back and offers Eustace a tote bag. Really, my guy. I'm pretty sure you could legally get it back <laughs> for free. Then the door gets slammed on him. When it becomes nighttime, they hear a creak at the door and check outside. Then we get King Ramses. Who Yo, t- like, bro, look how this shit is is shown. Like, look how this shit was animated. This is the exact same episode I was watching when I was sick. This keeps repeating, return the slab or suffer my curse. Return the slab. What? Return the slab. And you know, use this bitch ass, lame ass nigga, not gonna get that shit back. It's just such a creepy design, and also it's a 3D model in a 2D animated show. There's so many instances of just plain creepy stuff in this cartoon, but that's what gave it its charm. I feel like Courage the Cowardly Dog definitely let young kids know whether they like the horror genre. So, shout out to Courage the Cowardly Dog for that. I also want to talk about another because episode called this. Remembrance of Courage Past, which is actually the second to last episode of the entire series. I don't this think I remember this one. Courage's parents, which sadly got taken away from him at an early age due to an evil veterinarian. This veterinarian puts Courage's parents in a rocket ship, and Courage can't do anything because he's just a pup. While being chased, Courage hops into the garbage disposal and escapes. He watches as his parents are sent off to space and waves goodbye. Damn. We see how Courage is adopted by Muriel and why she decides to name him Courage. Meanwhile, in the present day, the same thing is about to happen to Muriel and Eustace. But how this nigga still pushing, bro? And I woulda, yo, Eustace, come on, my nigga. As much as you be be talking that shit, you should have used them them long ass steppers to step on this nigga, bro. Courage is able to save the day and send the veterinarian to space this time. In space, he finds himself with all the other dogs he has experimented on, including Courage's parents. Bro was sick. He was just sending dogs to space for the fuck of it. Damn. Yeah, he. Those two trash. episodes never left my mind. I, yeah, I think about those episodes to this day. Yeah. Jurassic Bark, Futurama. This is mm, a little bonus. Futurama. The reason I'm throwing this in, I remember Futurama too, is because one Futurama. Yeah, Futurama isn't really a kid show though. Wasn't really made for kids. It was a show for young adults. And two, I don't think this episode traumatized anyone. It was just incredibly sad. And if you're a fan of Futurama, you already know what I'm talking about. This episode, Jurassic Bark, was the hardest one to rewatch for me. This episode is about Fry's old dog from 1997 named Seymour. In case you guys don't know, Futurama takes place in the year 3000 with Fry being the only person from the year 2000 since he accidentally fell into a cryogenic chamber on New Year's Day. Anyway, Fry finds Seymour as a fossil in a museum where he then takes home to the professor. The professor explains that he can actually bring back Seymour with new technology and so mm. Fry begins getting ready for Seymour's return. This includes a doggy bed, a collar, and some chew toys. When the professor is ready to bring back Seymour, Bender throws his body into a pit of lava because he's jealous that Fry will have a new- Bender was such a, like, I had a love-hate relationship. That nigga Bender always did the dumbest shit. Best friend. We get a flashback of Seymour doing everything in his power to find Fry. Seymour eventually finds Fry, but no one in the lab notices that Fry is in there. Even his parents who go to pick up Seymour. Talk about frustration. Anyway, Bender jumps into the lava pit and retrieves Seymour's body. Seymour didn't burn due to the material covering his body. The professor finds out that Seymour actually lived his full lifespan of 15 years, 12 years after Fry's disappearance. So Fry decides not to bring him back simply because he doubts Seymour even remembers him and he probably moved on with another family. Damn. But wait, here's the kicker. We, the audience, get a fl- What you happen? But wait, here's the kicker. We, the audience, get a fl- Copyright? Which, you know, that's- What the fuck just happened? Audience, get a fl- Okay, here, here, I got you, I got you, I got you. Here probably got. moved on with another family. But wait, here's the kicker. We, we the, the audience, audience get, get a flashback 
of Seymour really just standing there like a real ass nigga, bro. He was really by his dolly on the block, nigga, and everybody just walking past him like a bitch ass nigga. He really waiting for his bro to come back, fall, spring, all that, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Just standing on the block like a real ass nigga. But at some point, he got tired, so the nigga got hungry. Ain't nobody was feeding him. So, you know, his old ass really just pulled up on the block, just stood there, and then that nigga packed himself up, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then the episode ended. The episode was actually nominated for an Emmy in 2003, which, you know, that's just how good the episode was. Sadly, mm -hmm. it did not win the Emmy. Uh, the Simpsons beat it out, which is also made by Matt Groening, so Matt Groening, good on you. <laughs> yeah, this mm. episode tore my heart out when I watched it. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Good video, man. I guess that's a that's a that's a throwback to a bit too. Yo, I'm not gonna who's you. Well, okay, which out of all the cartoons right there, which one was the 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 creepiest one? Out of all the cartoons we just seen right there, I'm not gonna lie. It's a toss up between cat dog. Not a cat dog one. It, it's probably the cat dog one. I'm not gonna lie. The cat dog one is actually like. If the cat dog one was actually pretty bad. Flapjack, Mr. Meaty, the Mr. Meaty one was bad too. The cat dog one inside out thing is actually just uncalled for though. It wasn't the cat dog one. The puppet one. The cat dog one was probably just the, the most uncalled for shit. The flapjack one, Mr. Meaty. SpongeBob glitch creepier. Good video from Toto, bro. Good video from Toto. <laughs>